My name is Jane Semeca. I'm professor of history here at Brookdale Community College for the last 28 years. And I teach women's history here. And so my involvement with this exhibit is through my course and through my work on Geraldine Thompson's biography. Geraldine Thompson does not have a biography of her. And that really came as a total shock to me when I was teaching my women's history class and I was teaching about Eleanor Roosevelt and realized that Eleanor Roosevelt had come to the farm to visit her friend, Geraldine Thompson. So I shared it with my class, they were amazed. And then when I got to looking into it a little deeper, I realized all the things that she had done and she was being forgotten. So I've spent the last year and a half researching and writing a biography on her. I did a talk on her life in March and Deneen Jackson invited me to join this project for the Smithsonian because even though the Smithsonian exhibit is traveling the country, we wanted to add something that added a bit about voices and votes that was local and we could think of no better person than Geraldine Thompson. So Brookdale Farm was actually started by a famous racehorse breeder named David D. Withers, who died in 1892. But he had spent, gosh, over 20 years developing a stud farm where you raise racehorses. And he had all the buildings built. He built, he bought a tremendous amount of land all and put it all together to make an 800 acre farm. After he died, William Payne Thompson bought from his estate the 800 acre farm because he was also interested in race horses and he was an executive at Standard Oil at the time. So he had a lot of money. And his son was Lewis S. Thompson. So Lewis S. Thompson met Geraldine Thompson in 1896 and they got married and moved here. So Geraldine Thompson and Lewis Thompson have lived on, lived on this farm from 1896. And she, after living here and having four children and raising five foster children here, got involved in public health causes, particularly tuberculosis. She and Lewis met at a tuberculosis health resort. They both had tuberculosis as young people and both were very sick, but recovered. And so she moves to Monmouth County and realizes there are no hospitals, there are no services, there is no health system here. And so between her own experience, the experience of her mother and grandmother who were great reformers in New York City, and living here um, at Brookdale Farm, she becomes interested in fighting for the building of a new tuberculosis hospital here in Monmouth County. And she fights the freeholders for over 10 years and she gets it built. And it became the Monmouth County Organization of Social Services, which still exists today and still serves over 60,000 Monmouth County families every year. So her, that is only one example of the work she did to help people. To, uh, she was a philanthropist. She gave lots of her own money to, for different good causes. She worked for everything from the Red Cross and the Boy Scouts to the uh, State Department of Institutions and Agencies. So she really was involved on the state level in running and hiring people for all the state institutions the prisons, mental institutions, hospitals, all across the board. So she's uh, had a over 50 year career uh, in social work. And so her, uh, but I'll add one last little sentence here, which is that in the census, when I read the census data on this family over every decade, her occupation was listed as none. So here's, this woman who was really running and creating and leading and giving to all the state institutions in the state of New Jersey listed her own occupation as none because she was a volunteer because she never took an, a, a pay for it. But uh, no one is more instrumental in creating what we have today as public-private partnerships in order to provide services that people need.
you know, I want people to know who she is. I feel like she's been forgotten and that people know the park. Uh, her environmental record is also amazing. She gave money in New York. She had donate. She had inherited land in New York State in the Hudson River Valley adjacent to Franklin Delano Roosevelt's estate and she donated it to make a state park in her sister's name. It's a it's a state park there and then she gave this land. She also was instrumental in Island Beach State Park being preserved for the people to enjoy nature. So she was a big into birds and the Audubon Society and so her the breadth of her work is just phenomenal and I want everybody to take inspiration. We should all be so inspired by a life that gave so much to everyone.